Good morning. How's it going? Uh, I put a post right before this with the uh, images. Uh, I wish you could do the images and, and the live stream at the same time. Um, but I'm going to reference some of those things, and uh, they won't make sense. What I'm saying here won't make sense unless you look at those. But I'm starting a new series, I guess, uh, category of videos. Um, I've got my then and real life ones, which is just me rambling for an hour or whatever about whatever. Um, and then I have ones where like I'm doing like figuring out music or whatever, just talking about that kind of stuff. Uh, but this is a new one. I'm calling it Let's Learn Together. Um, the other possibility title was You Teach Me and I Teach You, but uh, it's really Pokemon-ish and it's not exactly accurate to what I'm doing. Um, but the idea with this is I'm learning stuff and then as I'm learning it, I'm just I'm teaching it at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've found that like teaching helps you understand stuff better um, because you get to, to teach. Um, the only thing that's missing here is the uh, interaction. Um, when you have the interaction, you get the input from the people that you're teaching. That's where you can really learn a lot and uh, you can also be challenged because they can ask questions and you can be like, oh yeah, I guess maybe I got that wrong or, or whatever. So anywho, I'm missing out on that, but I'll still do the video anyways. So um, these aren't all going to be on this topic, but uh, so it'll be a few different things. But um, first I'm teaching uh, kanji and that was uh, something I mentioned in one of my live streams a bit ago that uh, with this free time, which the funny thing is with all, with all the downtime and stuff with the coronavirus and um, being out of work and everything, um, I uh, actually more busy <laughs> than, than normal, um, uh, like than I normally would be if I had free time. Um, but I'm carving out a little bit of free time here and there for these live streams, and uh, I enjoy this, and it's a nice output for me. So. Uh, the topic today is going to be on uh, Japanese kanji, and the thing that I'm challenging myself to do with, you know, with the uh, with this free time, finding the silver linings and, and all this stuff, is um, uh, I really want to learn just first grade Japanese kanji, and that's all I want to learn, um, and just get through it. Um, Japanese is something that I've been learning and teaching myself for years, like since I was like 11 years old, and. I had Japanese Pokemon cards and I just wanted to learn how to read them. That's how I started. And uh, I learned the simple uh, alphabet that they have, which is katakana, which is really, really easy to learn. And I, I might teach it on like a different stream. Um, and then uh, from there I learned hiragana and then learned the concepts for kanji, like how to write it out and stroke order and all that stuff. But kanji has been like the, the real difficult thing to, to learn. And it's also the meat of the whole language. Um, so for, uh, for reading and, and everything. Um, before I get into this, I'm gonna teach just one kanji per video, not per day, uh, but per video. And there's 80 kanji in the first grade of, uh, of learning Japanese. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, be showing you one of 80 today. And uh, the first one is uh, the kanji for day. All right, uh, I'm gonna write it out and I'm gonna write it in its stroke order, which is really important for, um, for writing out kanji. Um, the, the, the letters used to be more like, like hieroglyphics, but sort of like cartoons almost. Um, and they were very difficult to, to write out, like if you wanted to write quickly. So it was like, if you wrote the word for sun or day or whatever, it was a circle with a dot and, and rays coming out of it. And over time they got simplified and um, through different rulers, um, things got standardized. Uh, there was even like wars over these things. Um, but things got standardized into the more boxy kind of look that you see uh, in these characters. Now, uh, all of these big characters came from China. So um, Japan, at the time, um, did not have their own writing system. Uh, kind of like how uh, the, the Cherokee developed their own uh, writing system hundreds uh, but before that it was just all verbal you know um, so Japan didn't have their own writing system um, but around the fifth fifth century they started borrowing um, Chinese characters uh, I don't know the whole history of that I don't know if that was imposition or if that was just them adopting um, a system that you know made things uh, easier for uh, transmitting laws and, and information 
information and getting things written down for deeds and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so that was around the fifth century that they started borrowing those. I got some notes here. <clears throat> all right, um, any of these letters that I write, um, with a few exceptions, with very, very minor, like a handful of, of uh, uh, exceptions, um, they will all have two different uh, readings or pronunciations. One of them is going to be the original Chinese pronunciation at the time that they borrowed it. Now that was around the fifth century and you know, maybe a few years after that. Um, so some of these readings will be far removed from um, how they would be pronounced in modern Mandarin or any um, Chinese language. Um, so that's an interesting thing and it's kind of a cool history lesson, I guess. Um, so you can go back and, and hear what you know, the original Chinese word was. Uh, sort of like if uh, someone borrowed the word cheeseburger from America right now, you know, in the 21st century, and then, you know, 2,000 years from now, we don't say cheeseburger anymore. We say something different, but someone who borrowed it still says cheeseburger. Um, so uh, it's kind of like that. <clears throat> All right, so the two kinds of readings. Um, the, uh, the other kind of reading is, is just the native Japanese word. So just like Cherokee or, or other... Native American languages where they didn't have a writing system. This would be how they literally spoke it at the time, and it's the native original Japanese words uh, for it. All right, um, and uh, for the um, borrowed uh, readings, the Chinese ones, uh, they call those on readings, uh, spelled O-N, sort of like on, on and off switch, um, so on. And then uh, the Japanese, the original pronunciations, uh, are called kun readings, K-U-N, so kun. Um, whatever mnemonic you want to use, use it for yourself. Um, uh, I guess for the on readings, you could say like, I, I, I can't think of anything to help me memorize it. And up until now, I've always kind of gotten them mixed up and I have to like refresh my memory on it. Uh, but I think with this, as I'm learning it and, and teaching it, I'm, I'm going to be I'm getting it right every time uh, instead of wondering. So on for the borrowed words and kun for the um, for the original words. Uh, how about let's say kun? Um, th those are the words that came from their country. So uh, from the Japanese country, their kun readings. Um, and then the on and off. Um, sometimes you'll be reading the word in, as a Chinese word or as a Japanese. So that could be an on and off kind of a situation. That, that could be a mnemonic to use. All right, um, I've got some stuff written out here. Um, high tech, super high tech stuff here. Um, here's some examples of the on and kun readings right here. Um, so on the, uh, this side, I'm not sure how the camera's flipped for you, but uh, on this side, uh, we have um, mountain, river, and flower. The on reading, the one from China, um, for mountain was san, uh, river was sen, and then uh, flower was ka. But the original Japanese pronunciation uh, for mountain is uh, yama. I almost got that backwards. I thought that was a W. Yama, which you might have heard in other um, brand names and things like that, like Yamaha. Um, and then we have Kawa, which you might have heard in other brands like Kawasaki. Um, and then Hana, which you might have heard from Benihana. Um, so Hana means flower. Um, and uh, I think it even means flower in Hawaiian, which I don't know if that's just a coincidence or if that's a borrowed word kind of a thing. Um, and if I'm wrong, please let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm fallible. Uh, all right, cool. So now when do you pronounce these words? Um, when do you use the Chinese reading versus the Japanese reading? Um, for on readings, for the Chinese readings, um, you'll mainly use them, and, and just keep in mind that these are sort of basic guidelines, but it can be, there's a lot of different rules, and uh, it's kind of like when, when people are learning English, and there's uh, rules for like things that conflict, and it's like, oh, here's the exception to the exception to the exception. Um, just keep that in mind for these. These are just the basic guidelines. You can generally get by um, going off of this, but uh, 
more um, learned, studied folks are, are going to be able to tell the difference of which one to use. Um, all right, so for the on reading for uh, Chinese, um, that's going to be if it's part of a compound with other kanji. So um, I had a, a picture on the previous post that I had, uh, the video companion. Uh, you're going to see a picture of um, the letter for water, which I actually have written right here. It's uh, water. It's not perfect handwriting there. Um, but uh, it's a letter for water. If that is combined with other kanji, um, and you're going to see one uh, in the video or in the picture companion um, on the previous post, where it's water and then it's um, the the uh, character for day and the character for sun, I think. Um, and because it's combined with other kanji, uh, you're going to use the on reading, which would be the Chinese reading. Um, and uh, that reading is uh, sui. Sui, S-U-I. Um, but if the letter or if the kanji is alone by itself, uh, generally you're gonna use the kanji reading. So uh, if you just have water by itself, um, you're gonna use the Japanese word for it, which is mizu. Um, and you might have heard uh, mizu uh, in, uh, oh shoot, I forget his name. I forget if he's still the prime minister, but uh, uh, he has uh, mizu in his name. Um, so that's the original Japanese word for it. Okay, so this is all, I'm, I'm not gonna get this in depth in every video. I uh, just wanted to give, uh, this is sort of a, a baseline for what we're gonna learn. Because we're gonna be learning one letter per video and I'm gonna show you the stroke order for the letter and I'll give you the on reading and the kun reading. And then um, I'm also going to be referencing this amazing book. If you're gonna learn kanji, um, this book, I've had different books over the years and uh, they gave me bits and pieces of what I needed, but this book is probably the most comprehensive, absolute, complete guide that you could have to, uh, to kanji. It's got everything. Uh, I, I sound like Stefan, it's got everything. Uh, but it has, it really has everything. Um, it has um, just a ton of uh, preface explaining the origin of the kanji, explaining stroke order, explaining how to read them, all these different things. And uh, it's, it, it has everything. Uh, there's, I can't think of anything that's missing that, uh, um, that, that you would need. And I think it even gets into a little bit of uh, grammar. I'll have to double check that, but um, that's you know, really helpful. So anyways, uh, if you're really serious about learning this, I would get this. This is gonna be your Bible for, uh, for learning kanji. So it's the complete guide to Japanese kanji. And uh, it's from Tuttle. Tuttle Publishing does like pretty much all the major things that I've ever learned from uh, have been Tuttle. Um, they're, they're great. So uh, Tuttle Publishing. And uh, the authors are Christopher Seeley and Kenneth G. Henshaw with uh, Jiageng Fan um, as a, a contributor. Um, I think he, that would probably be someone who speaks Chinese, um, helping them with uh, the etymology, because that's what, that's really the key to this book that has like been like, whoa, this is awesome. It, it not only has everything that I would want, but it also has uh, etymologies on it. So um, every word will have a whole block of information about the etymology, where the word came from. Um, it, in cases where it came from an actual like drawing, sort of pictograph, hieroglyphic kind of uh, character, it'll show the original drawing in there. And, uh, and show how it evolved over the years and how the, the meaning of the word evolved over the years. So um, yeah, I can't, uh, can't uh, recommend this one enough. Um, so this one's really good and um, I'm gonna be referencing this and referencing um, a website. I wish I remembered the name of the site. I'll, I'll bring it up on the next one, but uh, referencing a website that has uh, um, all the different grades, first grade, um, literally first grade, like, you know, if you're you know, in first grade of school through, uh, I think, sixth grade, and then there's, like, the junior high level, and then there's the, um, the higher level, um, for, you know, post, uh, post-graduation and all that stuff, but, um, yeah, so that'll be, uh, one of the ones I reference, I'm not going to be referencing only from there, um, and, 
occasionally. Um, I'm not gonna show the pictures for all of these because uh, I recommend that you go out and, and buy your own copy of it. Um, it's become rarer over the years, um, but I recommend getting a copy of Pictographics. Um, this one is fallible, but uh, it's really cool because it has um, the, uh, the author, and I'm sure he worked with other people, but uh, the author um, makes these pictures, these sort of mnemonics for memorizing stuff. Now, some of them will be based off of the original um, pictures that, uh, that the letters were for, um, but uh, other ones are gonna be things that were just purely invented for this book. And that's where the drawback is. Um, you know, you're gonna be relying on that person's picture of how things work. But uh, a lot of them are really good for, for mnemonics. Just the, the first one off the bat. Um, the letter for, the kanji for stop looks like this. And to memorize that, you just picture someone standing there and then a crossing guard saying stop. Um, and, you know, this is, is burned in my head. Uh, I'll never forget um, what that is. Now, as far as how to pronounce it and uh, how to say it, um, that's a whole other story. And that's part of my journey uh, of trying to um, learn kanji. And uh, my hope is just, <clears throat> it's sort of my resolution, I guess, or my resolve, um, is before the end of the year, I, I want to at least be at a first grade level, um, which, uh, you know, is embarrassing or whatever, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. And uh, um, you got to, any language that you learn, uh, I learned this from someone who uh, taught Spanish um, in a Spanish class that I was in growing up. Uh, she always said that uh, basically if you're going to learn a language, you have to sort of humble yourself and um, learn it like a baby uh, is learning it. So, you know, when a baby is learning uh, here, is learning and picking up on English and everything, they're hearing it and then they start doing baby talk and they're starting to kind of, you know, try to figure out the words and say them until they are able to say the first word. And then they start putting together... Um, sentences and uh, then it becomes more and more complex from there and during that process um, that child up until they need to they need to start uh, learning letters um, you're not slamming them with uh, letters and, and you know reading and, and all that kind of stuff necessarily um, you want them to be able to speak at first and then have something to write um, and uh, yeah so I don't know why I brought that up and I kind of lost my train of thought but uh oh um so you you want to learn like a like a child would learn um and uh if, if that's hard to do it's going to be hard to learn if uh if you're wanting to shortcut things and um you know uh be um get ahead of yourself or whatever so I'm learning these first 80 uh before the end of the year that's my plan um okay Cool. With all that said, I'm going to go to the actual uh, meat of the video, and this will be what most of the videos are. It's just me um, writing out the kanji, saying what it is, and then um, going over some of the things that I've learned from different reference materials um, for the, um, the readings, for how it could be used in different compounds, um, and uh, the etymology of it. Okay, so the first one. Here's the first one, and this will be the stroke order of it. Okay, so the first stroke, um, and uh, in one of the videos I might teach like um, the the rules for how to write out uh, kanji. There's uh, there's rules for like um, you want to have uh, you want to go in order of like top to bottom, left to right, and all that, and um, different things for how to write it out. Um, that helps immensely with um, being able to see a kanji and being able to write it out yourself. And uh, there's a lot of websites where if you write it out, um, like this is a little like drawing pad, uh, it will find the kanji for you. Um, and the better you are at writing it, um, the easier it is to look up a kanji if, uh, if you're wanting to learn it. And uh, there's a lot of apps, uh, and the apps are going to be a lot better because you can use the 
uh, touch screen interface to uh, draw it out. Okay, so here we go. First letter that we're going to learn. Here's the first stroke. I have a long downstroke right here. Okay. And then my second stroke is going to start at the same spot. And um, you'll see this a lot where, here I'll just write it. It's going to be kind of like an L shape, like an upside down L shape. Um, that's one stroke right there. Anytime that you have a corner like this, where you're going from left to right and down, it's gonna be a single stroke that you do. It's not gonna be like a stroke and then a down. It's always like this. But it doesn't work in the opposite direction. You're never gonna write out um, something like that. Never. You will write it out like that. Um, and you're never gonna write it out like this. All right. And that makes sense for like calligraphy and things like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna write uh, a single line here. This is my third stroke. And then a single line at the bottom. This is the fourth stroke, okay? I'm putting the number right next to where you start the stroke from. All right, cool. So uh, this letter means sun or day. Sometimes it'll be shorthand for Japan and it can be a counter for days. I'm going to focus primarily on the sun and the day, and uh, mainly day here. Um, so um, just like in English, where we have uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and all that kind of stuff, um, and they all end with the word day. Um, in any compound where you're saying, um, you know, it's like Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, um, you're gonna see um, see the uh, a sun uh, there uh, representing day. So every time the sun passes, that's another day. Um, when we get to it, there's gonna be one that looks pretty similar uh, and it's a letter for moon. And you can guess how, what that sues for uh, as far as uh, time. Um, Every time there's a moon, there's a month. So, um, so you have the sun for every day and then the, the moon for every month. All right, cool. So let's talk a little bit about the um, uses here. Um, <laughs> the funny thing for, uh, for the word Sunday is you're gonna use the same letter twice. You're gonna have sun and then there's a, a letter that's used that means like day of the week uh, and then sun. Um, so it's actually sun day. Um, yeah, so let me actually uh, write that one out real quick. Actually, no, uh, let's talk about the readings. So um, let's go over the on reading, which, or no, no, the, the kun reading, which would be the uh, original um, Japanese reading from the country of Japan, so the kun reading. Um, the primary kun reading that you're going to see um, and anytime I do any kun readings, uh, it's going to be in capital uh, letters. Um, let me get another sheet of paper. Okay. So anytime you see a kun reading, uh, we're going to do it in capital letters. Capital, because it's original, it's from the country. Um, so those would be kun readings. And then anytime we have the um, Chinese letters, those would be, or not letters, but pronunciations, those would be the on readings, and those are gonna be lowercase. All right, so kun will come from Japan. And then, did I do that right? Not sure if I did that right. And then the on readings are gonna come from China, which is a symbol for China is the box with the line through the middle, it actually literally means uh, middle. So it's like the middle country, which for Japan, geographically, they're gonna think of it as uh, as the middle, because Japan is you know far east. All right, so kun. For um, day, say sun slash day, um, the main readings that you're gonna see are gonna be um, Nietzsche, not Frederick, um, and occasionally you're going to see 
Nichijitsu. You don't see that as often, but uh, the pronunciation is Nichi. Now, um, if you remember for Kun, that's going to mainly be if the letter is by itself. Okay? So if the kanji is by itself, you're going to use the original Japanese uh, reading for it. Um, and then the on reading from China uh, would be uh, the primary one you're going to see is he. Um, and then which I just realized uh, on the other, on the companion um, pictures that I, I posted before this, um, I was capitalizing and lowercasing based off of the cone or the own. Um, and I just realized that I um, made something uppercase that shouldn't be uppercase. But uh, there we go. I might be wrong, but I'm not lying. All right, uh, so that's the primary one you're gonna see. And then occasionally, if it's at the end of a word, um, you're going to see ka. So the own reading again is going to be uh, in compound compounds of kanji. So if it's compounded with any other big kanji letter, you're going to see the, the own reading uh, as, a, as a guideline, not a rule. Okay. All right. Now, um, so Nietzsche by itself, not Frederick. Um, this is going to be much, much sunnier than, than Frederick Nietzsche. Um, so by itself it'll be Nietzsche, and then in compounds it'll be he. Now, um, in Japanese there's going to be some things where, um, the way that they originally, uh, spoke and still speak, uh, within the accent, there's going to be limitations or things that, uh, um, alter certain letters. If you see the letter, um, he, or H, uh, and it's following something else, sometimes, um, because of the way they pronounce it, they pronounce it not from the back of the throat, like ha, like ha ha ha, um, like in English, they pronounce it in the front of the mouth, they pronounce it through, um, through, the, through the lips, so um, it's like a hu, or he, 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 uh, so it's through the, the front of the mouth. Um, there we go, that's our happy person, and he's got he coming out of the front of his mouth. So um, it's pronounced kind of through the lips. Um, in certain combinations of letters, um, like this one, if it's at the end, um, the uh, pronunciation will change to a B sound. So it'll be like B. And uh, <laughs> hope this didn't bleed through too much. I'll give you an example. The word for Sunday Let's do that. The word for Sunday is going to be sun. So it's funny that they have the same one. The, the rest of the week, though, um, like they, they'll have Sunday, they'll have Monday, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are different letters. Um, they're like uh, gold, I think silver, uh, water, um, fire, and something else. But it's interesting, every, every culture has, uh, has their own uh, names for the days. All right, so um, in this compound, we have sun. And then there's this letter. Um, it's pronounced yo in compounds. Um, so here we got sun, um, which would be... Let me make sure I'm not getting this wrong. Okay, so sun, and this is actually a almost a breaking of the rules, um, or an example of how the rules are broken. This is sort of a compound, but we're going to use the actual kun reading, um, which normally, normally is, uh, normally alone. All right. Um, and then the next letter is going to be, um, a word for basically day of the week. And, uh, it's spelled out like this. All right, I kind of made it way smaller than, uh, than the other one. Um, we'll pretend to enlarge that. But uh, so this is sort of a counter for day of the week. And this one is pronounced yo. Uh, it's actually a long O, so uh, say it twice as long as you normally would. So instead of yo, it would be yo. All right, uh, and then it ends with day. So 
Um, this will be the compound basically for um, day of the week. Okay, now the interesting thing here is we had the Kuhn reading for uh, Nietzsche. Uh, Yo is also the Kuhn reading, I believe. Actually, let me double check. No, uh, Yo is also the Kuhn. Yeah, it's the Kuhn reading. Um, and then the last one is the Own reading. And uh, it would normally be He, H I, but since it's in a compound coming after um, something before it, um, the H turns into a B. So just imagine that um, if you're pronouncing uh, H through the front of the mouth, like h, h, he, he, um, and then just close the lips, b, 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 he, b, he, b. It's kind of the same thing. The only difference is that the, the lips close. So um, in here, the pronunciation is B, okay? And I made it lowercase since it's an on reading. So Nichi Yobi, or I said that wrong. Nichi Nichi Yobi. Nichi Yobi. All right. Um, so this one, I'm just going to put an asterisk on there because the, the meaning is day of the week. Um, say like of the week. All right. And then B in this compound means day. So Sunday. Sunday. So Nichi Yobi. Nichi Yobi. And then uh, Monday, um, moon, uh, you'd say getsu. So moon would be getsu yobi. And then there's like kin yobi and all that. I don't have them memorized, but uh, they will pop up in the first uh, first 80 kanji. Because uh, first graders will, will need to know that stuff, right? Okay. All right. So um, let me talk about the etymology of it real quick. And then uh, we'll review the... Um, stroke order, the um, own and kun readings, and the meaning and all that. So let's be the last thing. All right. So the original pictograph for it, let's flip, the, flip this upside down. Just ignore the other writing there. So the original pictograph for it, pictograph just means, I mean, it's kind of what it sounds, but uh, uh, it just means a picture. Um, so like uh, hieroglyphics, you could say, are uh, pictographs. So the original pictograph was this. It's like a dot in the middle. Um, older ones might have had actual sun rays coming out. But uh, over time, sort of like an evolution chart or de-evolution, um, it got, uh, the, the uh, rays went away, uh, and then the dot became a line, which almost looks like a theta in, uh, in Greek, but has nothing to do with that. Uh, and then uh, eventually, um, through regulation, it got squared off to what we have today, which is a rectangle with a line through it. So if you squint your eyes really close, it kind of looks the same. And knowing the progression kind of helps you memorize um, that word as sun and or day. Okay. All right. Now, uh, originally that dot um, that was put into the original uh, image of the sun um, was probably there to distinguish it from um, from it just being like a circle um, and trying to represent it as an actual. Um, uh, object, you know, um, rather than just an abstract idea. Um, and then a good mnemonic uh, is, um, I don't know, you can use your own mnemonics for it, but uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, I've got uh, one more thing um, just to add to it. The two alternate readings for it. Um, so we had Nietzsche as the primary um, Kuhn reading, and then he as the primary Kuhn reading. Um, but occasionally you'll see Jitsu, or Jitsu. Um, that uh, you could see in the word today, um, which uh, today, um, it's a letter for like origin and then um, sun. Uh, so, you know, it's like today, right now. Um, in that compound, um, uh, you have hon, which would be 
I'm not sure if it, the meaning there is uh, origin or book or, or whatever, but uh, I think it's origin. Um, and then jitsu, which would be the, the sun. Um, so honjitsu means uh, today. You don't have to remember that. Um, and then an example where it ends, so we had uh, jitsu, an example where it ends with ka at the end, you see the dash there, meaning that it's always going to be at the end of the word, uh, is um, second day, which uh, is futsuka. Um, and that's all lowercase, which means that it's, it's all the, um, the uh, Chinese uh, borrowed um, words for it, so futsuka. And uh, the letters for that are um, the letter for the number two, which is actually just two lines. You might have seen that um, in other things. Uh, and then the letter for the sun. So you have the number two and then the sun. Uh, so two day, so, or second day, the number two day. Um, all right. So yeah, if I was describing something, something to someone, you know, uh, on the first day, there was this. And then on the second day, on the Futsuka, uh, is is that all right cool um, oh yeah and then uh, we'll just uh, review the stroke order again stroke order is important and also the number of strokes that are in the letter um, because um, the, it, the whole thing's really complicated and sometimes if you're searching for a word uh, you're gonna be looking in, in different orders you might look in like alphabetical order some um, like English translation ones will have things in the in the English alphabetical order. Um, you wouldn't find that in Japanese because they don't care about the uh, uh, like Latin alphabetical order or Romaji. Um, but uh, knowing the number of strokes, you can actually um, look things up by the number of strokes. Um, like earlier, I was looking up the, that word that meant uh, that kind of big word that uh, was for day of the week. That word has 18 strokes in it, and in any dictionary, I could pull it up, look for the list of 18 stroke words, and then find it right there. Um, so the, the word for sun has four strokes in it. And again, uh, you're never gonna see this as a single stroke. You're always gonna see this. And I think the video might be backwards, so, um, Sorry about that, uh, and I'll have to get that fixed for the next one. But anytime you are starting from the top left and then you're making an L shape down to the bottom right, uh, you can do just a single stroke from there, which means you don't lift your pen or brush if you were doing uh, like real hardcore uh, calligraphy. Okay, so the first uh, stroke right here starts at the top and it's just this straight line. So that's the first stroke, one. And then the second stroke is this sort of corner shape. So single stroke right there, second stroke. And then the third stroke is that line in the middle. It used to be a dot in the old, um, in the old uh, pictographs. And then the bottom. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. And if you're practicing any kind of calligraphy or practicing any kind of kanji, um, just like music and piano, guitar, or whatever, um, you want to take it slow so that you're accurate because as these things go on, um, it's going to be really important that you have things um, proportionally the right size because you might have a word that has this letter in it as a compound within the word and you're going to need to um, take it slow so that you're doing things in the right size. But over time, you get faster. Okay. There you go. All right. That's my uh, kind of crappy form handwriting there. But hey, that one turned out all right. So uh, there you go. That is sun and or day. The kun reading is Nietzsche. The primary one is Nietzsche. And then the on reading is he. And it can either mean the sun, the fiery, flaming ball in the sky, or it can mean day, which every day is every time the sun passes us, or goes around, or we go around, or we spin, whatever. 
Um, anyways, I <laughs> hope you had fun. Um, the next videos, any videos like this uh, for kanji are going to be a lot shorter. I'm going to cut right to the quick and just go straight to writing it out, the number of strokes, the own reading, the cone reading, examples of combinations and compounds that you can use it in, and the etymology. And that'll be it. Um, I forget what the second letter is going to be. Oh, the second letter is going to be super easy. Um, just as a preview, uh, we're going to be going to the num number one, which is that one single line stroke right there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that one. That one's probably the, the easiest one that you could possibly learn and, uh, and memorize because it just means one. Um, and uh, it can also be used for ordinal and cardinal um, uh, counting and all that kind of stuff. Cool. All right. So thank you for uh, joining. Let's learn together. Um, I'm feeling a, a bit of a of a Bob Ross. Is that his name? Uh, Joy of painting kind of vibe here. And I think I might go with that. And the next one might be even more uh, relaxing uh, than than this one. So um, and we'll start painting happy trees, which uh, a tree is going to be. I think the third or. Fourth fourth one that we're going to learn, so we will actually draw some happy trees in Japanese. So stay tuned for happy trees in Japanese. <laughs> that could be the name of the channel. Um, and have a good day. Have a good Nichi.